Hey, YouTuber fans, streaming fans, cryptocurrency fans, it's your boy Britt VR. Welcome to the show. Today we have James Welling. Um, he was at the show, I was just at for blockchain and business, and he presented permission blockchain, which I never heard of that concept. So, did you invent that concept, or did that concept come from anybody important? Well, um, you know, IBM was one of the first forerunners in permission blockchain, okay. and they developed uh, the blockchain called Fabric, and eventually that was uh, put into an umbrella project called Hyperledger, uh, which also uh, has a blockchain called uh, um, Sawtooth. Uh, they have a uh, Ethereum virtual machine smart contract uh, blockchain uh, called Burrow, and um, it, that's all governed by the Linux Foundation. And there are other uh, permission blockchains, uh, such as Forum that um, J.B. Morgan has. But you know, a lot of those uh, same groups also contribute to the Hyperledger Foundation. And uh, Ripple is actually um, uh, a new member of the Hyperledger Foundation. And um, so I just uh, I came to uh, permission blockchain because I although. Uh, Two years ago, two or three years ago, you know, when Ethereum started uh, coming out uh, with their Tori Complete uh, uh, smart contract, I really got interested in it and I started mining. Um, but as I started mining and I started uh, staking and I started masternoding, um, you know, I realized that uh, fundamentally the blockchain was a database that we could use with an enterprise. And I, I realized that um, enterprises are going to want to have control of the validation who validates and when, and who can do consensus. Mm -hmm. And that's when I discovered a uh, Hyperledger project, Fabric. And so um, those were already pre-existing, up and running and going. And um, I liked how they were structured. They're structured much like uh, the Apache Foundation, um, and how they go about adopting their testing, and their community, and, um, uh, and, and its certification processes that would also give uh, enterprises a really got warm and fuzzy feeling that they knew that when a production release came to be that there was uh, certain standards that they were familiar with um, when they went to deploy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since you got into cryptocurrencies for mining, uh, I think this is a good question. What do you think about ASIC, um, Bitmain, uh, to be exact, coming out with an <laughs> equal hash miner? Well, what uh, is came it? Out with... One of the... One of the... <laughs> Uh, criticisms that we get for permission. And I, I don't do solely permission. Uh -huh. I do a lot of permission and a lot of use cases where I do work with Ethereum in, in public, but uh, based on use cases. But uh, one of the things that a lot of uh, public blockchain criticisms come from, from permission is that it's centralized, right? right. And uh, I, I think you can point to Bitmain as, uh, as, well, you know, there's some centralization issues there as well, right? So I think the, the whole idea of a decentralized mining community um, kind of gets undermined when a lot of the mining is consolidated into uh, small locations or, or in control of uh, gov foreign governments um, that, that, that may not have the best interest at heart. Um, and, and we may not be able to see the 51% attack um, uh, if, if it's coming. Okay. Um, so what Permission blockchain. Um, what companies are is your company working with uh, that you can say? Because I know there's probably you know documentation say hey everybody can't know this, but could you just give us any um, examples of companies using this permission blockchain? Um, there are For, people that you're working uh, with. You, you, yeah. You know, that, 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 yeah. Uh, well, my company. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but there's, you know, the Amazon, uh, okay. the way that when they're deploying their cloud service application, they're uh, working with Hyperledger projects. Um, the Microsoft Azure uh, platform is also working with uh, Sawtooth, which is a Hyperledger project. And uh, Oracle is also working with um, Fabric to deploy their blockchain service application. And, uh, you know, a lot of things about permission blockchain is we don't really hear a lot about the projects because uh, those are the kind of companies that don't want to tell you what they're doing. Okay. I mean, for the same reason why 
uh, Apple, you don't know what's going to happen with the next release of Apple. It's an iPhone. You don't hear about the visas and functions and what's going on until you know the very last minute in the release. Uh, so these enterprise customers don't like to let on exactly what they're doing because it's their intellectual property that they're trying to conceal and they want to make a big buzz when they're ready to release. So they don't have to pump a token, so they don't have to tell you what they're doing, but they're doing it and uh, they're working with them. I mean, like Federal Express is another uh, pretty big custom, custom end user that is working with Bitcoin. These a lot of people, logistics companies, uh, healthcare companies that are working uh, within a permissioned uh, network to deploy blockchain use cases. And it's not in conflict with the public either. There's, there's a lot of interoperability happening. Um, uh, Ripple, for example, is working on a project called Quilt that has the uh, interledger protocol that allows for interoperability between public and private. And what it enables us to do is kind of control um, uh, when and where and who sees what, and even if it's public, then it's based off use case and need. There's a purpose for public, then we'll have public. If it's perfect for just a few people to be involved in the consortium, then it's that. So it's, it's basically uh, different tools in the toolbox to solve different problems. We don't have to always just have a hammer because uh, there's more problems than nails. All right, this is the last question. Um, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. Uh, you're a very, very smart guy on blockchain technology. I just love to be able to talk to people who understands information that I understand because, you know, you don't get that a lot. Um, so my last question is, how many companies are really looking to adding blockchain technology for their big data? Is it is it like 20% because, you know... I, it's hard to gauge a number. You okay. know, a lot of them aren't really publicly disclosing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that it's safe to say that most of these companies are looking at it, but they're looking at, uh, you know, the very, very pilot R&D testing phase, right? Okay. They want to explore what this database can do, what kind of problems it can solve. Um, they're not ready to release a, 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 a you know, a, a production uh, version of their product, you know. And and that's the, there's a lot of difference between the crypto world. Who yeah. they release everything immediately. They release a white paper, but that's all they release. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the enterprise they actually are trying to create value, and then they'll promote later. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, please hit that like button at the bottom and please subscribe to the channel. Thank, thank you. you. All right.